So um, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Pinterest experience with uh, integrating uh, Bootin uh, and Bollox with Spark SQL. Yeah. So a little bit about me. I'm a software engineer at Pinterest, uh, working on the Explorer platform team, and uh, we're focused on improving uh, Spark SQL usability uh, and performance for engineers uh, at Pinterest. Uh, so for today's agenda, I'm going to go through the background and motivation uh, for why we decided to go uh, with Gluten and Velox, and then I'll be talking about the tests and uh, the results of those tests. And then I'll discuss how we did a seamless rollout uh, of Gluten and Velox uh, to our uh, ad hoc query platform. Um, and then I'll talk about the current status of the project and uh, some of the things that were uh, going to work on next. Um, yeah, so um, at Pinterest, job cost is out of control. Um, uh, Spark SQL is a big cost factor. It costs us millions uh, per year. Um, and this is primarily driven by the fact that uh, uh, there's increasingly higher memory requirements uh, from users. So users' jobs, they fail with uh, out-of-memory exceptions, uh, which leads to the user setting higher memory configs. Um, and these disproportionate memory requirements of individual jobs lead to the cluster not being uh, efficiently utilized. So uh, there's an over subscription of uh, memory and then there's an underutilization of the CPU. Um, and in addition to this, uh, the Spark operator performance is uh, stalling from uh, version to version um, and primarily due to the limitations of the JVM. And also, existing efforts in vector processing show promising results. So, um, uh, DataBricks, Photon, Starrocks, DuckDB, and Video Rapids all show uh, great performance uh, uh, for queries running on those platforms. Um, so, the query infrastructure at Pinterest uh, kind of looks like this we have Apache Airflow for scheduled queries, um, and then we have a uh, query book. Uh, which is basically a query IDE that's built internally at, at Pinterest uh, for ad hoc queries. Um, we use both Spark and Trino. Uh, Spark runs on top of uh, a Hadoop cluster, um, as, and Spark um, is uh, used primarily uh, for both scheduled and ad hoc queries, whereas Trino is mostly used for ad hoc uh, use cases. So um, users generally use Spark. Um, um, for heavy queries that cannot be uh, uh, handled by Trino. Uh, so why did we decide to go with Gluten and Velox? So there are many vectorized uh, execution engines on the market, and we explored many of these options, uh, but ultimately decided to go with Gluten and Velox as it uh, best uh, fit our current infrastructure. And we didn't want to have to do any extensive migration uh, to um, to a different execution engine. Um, and in addition to this, uh, deployment of Velox and Gluten is very simple. All you need to do is basically add the jars and set a couple configurations, uh, and, uh, and Velox is working uh, on, on Spark. Um, Velox also has compatibility with Presto, and since we also run Presto uh, internally, um, we want to focus on a single uh, execution engine. Um, there's also a large community behind Velox and also a large company. Um, and we also had developer support uh, from uh, the Intel team on, on Gluten. Um, so testing Gluten and Velox. So TPCH is a great benchmark, but doesn't often uh, translate into real world performance. Uh, so on the Gluten GitHub page, it says that uh, we can achieve 2.7 times uh, faster than vanilla Spark. Um, and we also want to understand the potential performance of Gluten on our production workloads in the scenario where everything was vectorized. So uh, we didn't want to have any fallbacks. Um, and uh, we want to uh, see the potential of uh, how much Gluten can um, speed up our workloads. Uh, so no Velox on Gluten means that we couldn't use any queries that had UDFs. We couldn't we could only read from Parquet and write to Parquet, and we couldn't have any conflict uh, types in our queries. Um, and we also ran all our test queries uh, using um, 
explain uh, on gluten to uh, see if there was any fallback. So uh, if there was any fallbacks, we would uh, basically filter out those queries. Um, and we want to have a focus on heavier queries. Uh, so at Pinterest, 5% of the jobs take up 90% uh, of the cost. Uh, so we wanted to understand how Velox would perform on these uh, uh, heavy queries, uh, as these types of jobs will kind of drive down the cost uh, of our platform the most. So yeah, uh, we tested over 200 jobs. And on average, we saw a 60% reduction in memory utilization and a 60% speed up on average. And around 8% of the jobs that we tested saw a performance degradation of uh, greater than 5%. And uh, these slower queries had miscellaneous issues, but uh, some things we ran into is the columnar to row and row to columnar conversion uh, during fallbacks. Um, uh, was kind of slow, and then also spill performance on, on Velox was also uh, really slow. Um, and during this testing process, we, uh, help, uh, we fixed a lot of bugs within Gluten and Velox um, with the help of the Intel team. Um, so uh, for the rollout, we wanted to focus on ad hoc queries first, uh, which basically will allow us to gather valuable information on how Velox would perform. And it also helps uh, our team internally gain experience uh, with Velox so we can be better prepared uh, during uh, on-call and when uh, users' uh, production queries fail. Uh, so uh, yeah, before moving to schedule queries that can affect production critical jobs. Um, and we also wanted the um, uh, experience to be seamless. So we don't want users to have to think about whether their query is, uh, can run on Velox or not. Um, and we didn't want to run all queries on Gluten Velox because Gluten Velox is a relatively new project, and there's are there are bugs, and fallbacks uh, of user queries can really hurt uh, performance. So uh, the user should be able to leverage the speed and power of Velox without having to think about it. Um, and users shouldn't have to understand the uh, internals of the Gluten and Velox in order to leverage it. And the reason we want to do this is that if a user writes a query, uh, he or she is not going to know whether that query has fallbacks um, uh, or, uh, or if it would actually work on Bloom and Velox. Um, yeah. And uh, we also wanted to do a controlled rollout um, so that we could control the amount and the type of queries that we run through Velox. Um, and then also we want to have the user not think about additional set of configs required uh, for gluten, such as off heat memory configuration and other gluten internal uh, configuration. Um, yeah, so this is how we kind of architected uh, the rollout. So we have query book, um, and then we also have uh, where users can submit uh, queries uh, to. And then we also have Jupyter's where users can submit queries from. Um, and these both uh, have a library called installed at BigPy. It's called BigPy, which is basically a Python library that's a wrapper around uh, Apache Libby. And so the user submits the query to uh, BigPy, which in turn submits the query to Libby. And on Libby, we have a process, um, a local Spark session that is always running. And basically, as queries come in, um, this, uh, we will analyze it using this local Spark session that's running on the Livy uh, server. And if the, um, if the uh, analysis basically reports back that there's more than one fallback, we would run the, uh, uh, the Spark query on vanilla Spark. If there was less than one fallback, then we would execute it on, um, on, on Veloc. Um, so yeah, this is kind of how the automatic configuration uh, works. So on vanilla Spark, we have we can have we have users set their memory configurations via set statements in the query, um, and those get translated to actual Spark configs. And so uh, when a user uh, enables Velox uh, by setting it to uh, setting the uh, flag to true, uh, well, what we would do is we would uh, basically uh, configure the gluten plugin. We would uh, change the shuffle manager class to use the columnar shuffle manager. 
um, we will enable off heap and then we would take the uh, memory and the memory overhead and we would add it together and set that to the off heap size and then we will had we had some My slides aren't updating. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should I wait? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, plug it in. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So uh, basically, when a uh, user writes a query, they can set the memory configurations, uh, the the uh, set statements on the query, and those get extracted out to uh, Spark config. Um, and then um, when the user sets, and then when the user sets uh, the Velox flag, what would happen is that the executor memory. Uh, and the memory overhead, they basically get added and those get set as the off heap size. Um, and the reason why we wanted to do this is basically we didn't want the users to have to think about setting uh, the Gluten plugin um, and then uh, adding the shuffle manager and then also configuring the off heap size in addition to the executor memory. Um, so um, that's why we uh, did the automatic configuration. Um, yeah, so we released uh, a alpha version to our users this uh, this Monday, and uh, we are currently collecting data. And currently, there is around uh, 63 jobs that uh, we ran on uh, that were run on uh, enabling the flag, and around 40 43 of these jobs actually used gluten, and then like um, uh, around. Uh, uh, yeah, around 43 succeeded, and then like there was around 21 that actually uh, uh, failed. So we have some digging to do on why those uh, jobs failed. Um, so for the next steps, uh, uh, we are moving from uh, the external shuffle service provided by Vanilla Spark over to Celeborn. Uh, so we want to do uh, testing with uh, Celeborn to make sure that it's working well with Boon. Um, and also, a bunch of our tables are moving over to Iceberg. Uh, so we want to um, basically have Iceberg support uh, enabled on Gluten as well. And um, some of our, also some of our most extensive queries, they use uh, UDFs. Um, and basically, we want to have a framework around uh, Velox UDF. Uh, so uh, engineers at Pinterest can write more optimized uh, uh, UDFs that can take that can leverage vector processing. Um, and uh, we also want to, so for all the ad hoc queries where gluten is enabled, we want to capture and analyze um, uh, the fallback so that we have an uh, idea of where we should focus on our efforts to improve, uh, improve the coverage uh, of gluten. Um, and then we are focusing on um, also uh, releasing this out to scheduled queries. Um, and then um, uh, we also want to focus on improving the complex, complex type support uh, on Gluten and Velox. Um, complex types uh, are some of the most expensive. Queries that read from uh, tables that have complex types are some of the most expensive queries uh, that we have at Pinterest. So that's why we want to focus on, on fixing that. Um, yeah. So. 
Parquet and Velox. So internal testing that we did with the Parquet reader uh, revealed that there was some concerns. Uh, there were schema mismatches, data being uh, incorrect data being produced. And so what we did was we kind of built a testing infrastructure using unit tests uh, and Presto. And the initial results kind of showed that there was 53 out of uh, 82, 82 unit tests failing. And so we partnered with Uber and IBM and we fixed most of these uh, issues. And the failure rate is uh, uh, now only 13 unit tests uh, failing. Um, and we are uh, looking forward to fixing more of the issues, primarily with nested complex types. Um, and also testing with more productive data. Yeah, uh, I just want to thank the Velox community uh, for making Velox. I want to take, uh, thank the Intel team and Binway for helping us uh, get gluten ready and working on our ad hoc query environment. Um, I want to thank the Uber Presto team and Ying from IBM for helping us uh, with uh, Parquet. And I want to thank Ashish Felix uh, Lou, Dusong, and the rest of the big data platform team at Pinterest uh, for making this project a success. Thank you. Any questions? Sorry. Question about your Jupyter code. Was it all data frames or was it SQL data? So Gluten uh, is mostly focused on SQL, uh, uh, Spark SQL, not data frames. Um, so we, we didn't really do any tests with data frames, just, just SQL. So I believe you guys, uh, for regular Spark, you were using RSS for the shuffle, the shuffle, the shuffle service? Yeah, we were, and, we were using the uh, external shuffle service that was provided by Spark. Oh, okay, okay that one. Like, yeah, yeah, but, but we are moving over to using uh, Celeborn. Yeah, and it's like, could you maybe like a little bit elaborate on this? Like, uh, what is it? Is this like an external setup or is it going to be like uh, between no shuffle? Is there going to be some spilling? Like. Oh yeah, the external shuffle is going to be outside of uh, outside of um, uh, the, the 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 Spark cluster. So okay, Celeborn is going to be outside of Spark, yeah, uh, yeah. and like yeah, it's columnar. So, it's going to be columnar shuffle. Yeah, it's going to be columnar shuffle. Yes, but it will also spill to disk. Yes, it will spill to disk. Yeah. Okay. So you had mentioned in the beginning that one of the key issues that you guys are trying to solve was the fact that your users were needing bigger and bigger memory requirements, which ended up resulting in underutilization of the compute resources and so on. Uh, in switching to gluten, did the memory requirements change or was it more that now things run faster and everybody's happier? So it's a combination of both. So the, the jobs run faster. So overall, the, the memory seconds being used is less. But in addition to that, we also saw a 16. Uh, so we ran uh, vanilla Spark and then we also ran uh, the same query using Velox, and we saw a 60% reduction in the memory utilization of the host. Uh, so um, we know that we can set the memory configs lower uh, for jobs that run on, uh, on Velox. So it should help with memory. Um, I'm wondering, do you have any streaming data pipelines at Pinterest or only batch data pipelines? Uh, we do have streaming workloads, but it's on Flink, not on Spark. Okay. okay. Did uh, the memory decrease overall, even in the cases where you had fallbacks, or? So that's the thing, like we, we filtered out all the queries that had more than one fallback. So uh, yeah, in the scenario where they're all fallbacks, memory is probably not gonna decrease that much. 